So we got to talk about Raw. And I got to explain this because I already know where this is going. Wait, wait. Really? You need to explain last night being a great show? No, I got to explain this. The oh. yeah, but and the comparisons. Okay. Mm. Yes, they didn't advertise Rock for the show. Oh, boy. And uh, not only did they not advertise him for the show, they didn't advertise him twice. And uh, I actually, I know people are going to get mad, but let's be real. This was really clever, okay? Because this place is on fire. It is at least their 11th straight sellout for television. This was the most what the most attended raw show since the pandemic. Over 15,000 people were there. They advertised CM Punk. They had all sorts of things announced for this show. And Rock was a surprise. And the thing is, they've advertised Rock for every time he's been on SmackDown. They're advertising Rock for next week's Raw. I thought it was extremely clever on a show where he was not advertised, to A, have him make a surprise appearance. So if you missed it as you're a viewer, you're like, I need to watch this show every week. And it was even more, I would even go as far as say ballsy. You know, normally they do the thing, and, and AEW should have done this with Mercedes. When Mercedes came out, and then they were going to have her appear again at the end of the show, she should have made it so clear she was coming out at the end of the show. But she didn't. And if you look at the ratings pattern, everyone turned the show off. And the final quarter did like, it was terrible. And uh, here, they essentially told you, Rock is leaving. He did his thing. He's done for the night. But then he came out at the very end of the show as another surprise. So, hey, it's just like anything. Advertise, 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 advertise. And... 5% of the time, do some gigantic surprise. But you shouldn't be doing a giant surprise 100% of the time. Like, save your surprises. Use them for when you need them. And Rock, my God, this guy, I mean, God, he just makes these shows such massive big deals when he is there. So, Cody comes out to open the show, and, you know, the people are super into him. They're going crazy. He's doing his promo for Mania. He's asking the fans to, to be there for him. And suddenly, Rock's music hit, and this place melted down that they got The Rock. Like, they just wanted CM Punk. Well, now here comes The Rock. And The Rock gets in the ring, and this guy, I can't wait to see the quarter this did. Because I think they spent three minutes just looking at each other, unmoving. <laughs> and, like, the place is going nuts. And so, finally, Rock puts his hands behind his back. And he gets in close. And he says something we can't hear. And Cody's like, what? And Rock smiles. And he walks away. And so, throughout the show, like, first they interview Rock. He says, ask Cody. Later, they ask Cody. Cody says... Doesn't matter. He's not going to be able to make it. And so for those of you wondering, because I did read his lips, his exact words in the ring when he whispered into Cody Rhodes' ears were, where did I put it? Oh, wrong, wrong report on, here. Will you stop it? I want to get the exact words. Okay. He leaned into Cody Rhodes and he said, Tonight, I'm going to make you bleed. So many words to remember. It was. I don't want to mess that up. I don't want to say, Tonight, I'm going to make you put ketchup on your forehead from the hot dog vendor. Because that's not what he said. He said, Tonight, I'm going to make you bleed. And show sure enough... Do we have to have this argument again? This is a different company. Yes, some things are the same. Some things won't change. But the Blade is back. Oh, my. The irony of the story about that memo going out. You know, I actually believe the memo. You know what I think the story with the memo is? I what? think the story with the memo 
is they don't want you to swear unless it's pre-approved. So they know about it and they can bleep it and out. And they can bleep it out in advance. Yeah. I, and well, I think that I think crowd? that's all it is. There are people who got that memo, okay? There are. There are others who have not heard anything about it. Maybe the people that got it are the people that have made mistakes in the past. For example, I probably would have gotten the memo. I've screwed up once or twice here. A few. But, you know, if I told Dom, you know, Dom, in, in the middle of the Rocks deal, I'm going to loudly say what he said, so have your finger, you know, maybe that's how it is. But anyway, Cody... I mean, he used the term wank fest. Can I say that on the air, Dom? That's what Cody said. Well, he said that. Yeah. And uh, and there's been profuse swearing, particularly by The Rock. I mean, The Rock was stealing lines from the Big Lebowski. This is what happens! <laughs> when Off you, is where you can go. What about the Alps? <laughs> that's it. it's beating a stranger in the alps when you beat a stranger, a stranger in, the in the alps yeah when you when when the out when the final boss is in the alps that's what it is here so so at the end of the show you know there's a big brawl cody's beating up jimmy's beating up solo and all of a sudden here is the rock and like people went what he's back and he starts beating the bejesus i mean this was the most one-sided cody got nothing And I will give Rock credit. I mean, he didn't do a lot, but, like, he didn't get tired. He beat this guy for, like, 15 straight minutes. He can do a tag match. No problem. Cody got tired of getting beat up so much. He beat this guy, (laughs) and it was even better because this, you know what? The juice was not fortuitous, but you know what was fortuitous? The frickin' rain. Yes. Rock takes him outside the building onto, like, the roof, I think. And, man, it's pouring down rain. The only thing... That uh, that we didn't get was like lightning. That would have made it better, but it's pouring down rain, and the rock is beating this dude, and he rips his his uh, his shirt off, and Cody's like just getting drenched. And then you know, Rock talks about the prophecy coming true, which was the line earlier tonight. I will make you bleed. I'm gonna make you bleed. And Cody's he's bleeding. He's like. He's got blood. And at first I looked at it and I thought, that's very red. I think that's stage blood. But then Rock comes up to him and he starts smearing the blood and he's putting it all over his weight belt. And the more he spears, the more blood comes out. I was like, nope, he cut himself wide open. <laughs> this Rhodes, this is the time of his life. Make it good. And he beats this guy and he cuts a promo on him and he cuts a promo on Mama Rhodes. Your daddy talked about hard times. He doesn't know about hard times. But you're going to know about hard times, boy. The Rock is going to learn you about hard times. And then he says, this is what happens when you, with the final boss, which they bleeped out. And, God, this Rock. The Rock on Friday said he was going to leave, or two Fridays ago, said he, to Cody's mama, I'm going to put blood on this weight belt. It's going to be filled with your son's, well, piss and blood. And that's exactly what was laid up upon that belt that Rock took off to show to everybody. It was a incredible finish to the show. It really was. Yeah, this was uh, this was awesome. I mean, what a great show. I mean, look. The show were... was, the show really was quite great. Yes. I mean, surprise appearances there was chaotic energy there were viral moments like you had with becky punch and dom you had cheeky insider stuff between drew and punk and becky and Rhea. you had actual wrestling a lot of times when you get all this other stuff you don't get wrestling we had reed and Sami Zayn went through a break andrade and vinci went through a break that was good jd and ricochet was really good and that was a match that showed off some of their production changes that they made when they got back from break they had that long still shot that they decided to use and it can't be said enough how much the production has gotten better so when you include all the the subtlety of paul and drew talking in the background that a lot of people didn't notice when you look at the melodrama between a lot of the the stuff that went on it really was a great Raw episode. It really was. Well, the other thing that we got to talk about is this. Uh, <laughs> we don't have time to talk about it. The CM Punk, Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre segment, <laughs> which I watched that. And by the time it was over, I thought that had to be 45 minutes. 
And so I went back, and it was actually only 23 minutes. But it went, I don't know how long it was supposed to go, but it went way longer than it was supposed to go. They were drastically cutting throughout the rest of that hour to get things back on track. And these three guys, I mean, it's all a work. But they were they were skating that line. Ribbon on the square? Especially CM Punk and Drew. I almost think that the two of them were like, let's just go out there. And they were trolling each other hardcore. <laughs> and you could just see, I mean, so great. Punk looked like he was actually kind of like, you know, I don't know, man. And then Drew's just having the time of his life. He's sitting back in that chair with his feet up. He's just like, and then Seth, I mean, it was wild. Seth getting every, hey, look, for Seth, getting the reaction he got right in Punk's face, you know, he took that. Look, everybody got something in that exchange. It was very good. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never You'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.